afternoon. I'm here with Dr. Porsa from Harris Health System and uh, Congressman Green, of course, uh, whose district we're in, and Dr. Janina White, uh, local health authority with Harris County Public Health. I'll start my remarks. We'll hear from Dr. Porsa, uh, then from Congressman Green, and we'll take any questions. First, I want to thank, thank uh, the Congressman, of course, for his continued support. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you for joining us and every member of our congressional delegation. Uh, Congresswoman Garcia, Congresswoman Fletcher, Congresswoman Jackson Lee, I know her office is represented here today. And Dr. Porsa, uh, thank you to you and your staff. You guys are working around the clock and you haven't stopped for at this point, well, well past um, a year, uh, heading into two years soon. So uh, with this pandemic, so I, I want to thank you for all your efforts. And of course, Dr. White, thank you for joining us. Look, the numbers are looking bad. We're staring down a crisis that is about as dangerous as it's been throughout the length of this pandemic. The Delta variant continues to spread like wildfire throughout Harris County. It is straining our hospital system, it is hospitalizing a record number of children, including those without underlying conditions. And it's harming our unvaccinated population in almost all cases. Just today, just today, we learned that there are more coronavirus patients hospitalized in the greater Houston region than at any previous point in the pandemic. Our public hospitals are strained to their breaking point, and Dr. Porsa will talk more about that. The consequences of this emergency are all the more tragic when we remember that there's a vaccine that is safe and effective and widely available. Harris County residents are losing their lives who don't have to, and families are suffering who don't have to suffer. When it comes to putting vaccines in people's arms, we're going big. We're going deep into communities. We're going door to door. We have a paid media campaign. We have a scholarship program for students who get the vaccine. We're taking walk-ins at all our sites. We're going to every corner of the community imaginable. And today we're adding yet another tool to our arsenal to encourage the community to protect not just themselves, not just those around them from the virus, but everybody in this county who may need a hospital bed and anybody in this county who may be affected by variants getting worse and worse as we allow the virus to spread. And so we're announcing that starting today, anyone who gets their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine from Harris County Public Health will receive $100, no strings attached. It's free, it's easy, no insurance is required. And here's how you do it. We have 10 sites any given day throughout Harris County. You find uh, a site near you at readyharris.org or at 832-927-8787. Our NRG Park site continues to operate. You can see which vaccines are being offered at each site. And every site has both one dose vaccines available as well as two dose vaccines available. Remember, if you're between the ages of 12 and 15, you're only eligible for the Pfizer vaccine. You can pre-register at readyharris.org or at 832-927-8787. You choose a location, choose a date, that's the way to skip the line. But of course, if you're not a planner, you can just show up. You can just show up, you can walk up, you can drive up. Um, and you know, just keep in mind, we're gonna prioritize the folks who pre-register. As always, we're offering free transportation to folks who don't have a car. We're making it as easy as possible. There's really no excuse. And now this is important. The program extends through August 31st. So don't wait. Go get your vaccine today. Claim your $100 and help us keep the community safe. All you have to do is come to one of the Harris County Public Health vaccination sites from today, right now. Folks that are getting their vaccine right now are getting their $100. Come by before August 31st, get your vaccine at a Harris County Public Health site and receive $100 in the form of a cash card or a virtual cash card that you can spend anywhere.
this is also about supporting small businesses right here in Harris County. As of May 2021, according to research done at Harvard University, small business revenue was down 37.9%. The number of small businesses open was down 35.8% compared to January 2020. Last week, we approved a $30 million grant program for the smallest small businesses, for the most vulnerable small businesses, and those are funds that businesses can use to pay rent, mortgage, workers, whatever they need. But they need our business too. And so I want to encourage anybody who gets uh, vaccinated to consider spending their $100 on local businesses. They need a boost. So let's, let's help everybody out with this. Think about your favorite neighborhood restaurant. Think about your favorite boutique shop as you're shopping for back to school. Help out your community. Look, this is more about this is about more than protecting ourselves. This is about protecting those who look after us. I'm here with Dr. Porson. He's representing dozens and hundreds of healthcare personnel throughout our county who have been working incredibly hard since March of 2020. They are tired. Their families are tired. They deserve us stepping up. They don't deserve people going to the hospital simply because they didn't want to get a vaccine when it's been shown safe and effective and we now have a $100 uh, incentive program. And so let's have their back. Let's do our part. There's no excuse. We have the power to put this crisis to rest within two to four weeks if each person who does not have the vaccine steps up right now. We need to close the gap in the vaccinated in Harris County. This is achievable. We can absolutely do this. Over 65% of the eligible population has at least one shot. What are you waiting for? This is in your hands. So come do your part as a member of this community. I'll repeat in Spanish briefly. Primero darle las gracias al doctor Porza que está aquí representando tantos eh, trabajadores médicos. Él lidera nuestro sistema hospitalario público. También al congresista Green que tanto nos ha ayudado durante la pandemia. Y a todos los representantes al Congreso. Está también aquí conmigo la doctora Janina White representando nuestro departamento de salud pública. En este momento estamos enfrentando una crisis que es tan peligrosa como cualquier otro momento que hemos visto durante la pandemia. La variante se continúa, eh, continúa a esparcirse a través de toda la comunidad. Está impactando nuestros sistemas hospitalarios, hospitalizando un número récord de niños, incluyendo niños sin condiciones subyacentes. Y casi el 100% de los casos, la población impactada es la población que no se ha vacunado. Hoy día, nos fuimos informados que hay más pacientes de COVID en los hospitales hoy de lo que han habido en cualquier momento anterior de esta pandemia. Las consecuencias de esta emergencia son aún más trágicas cuando recordamos que todo esto se puede evitar, que hay vacunas, hay una solución que es gratuita, que es efectiva, que es segura. Hay residentes que están perdiendo sus vidas, que no tienen que estar perdiendo sus vidas. Hay familias sufriendo que no deben estar sufriendo, no tienen por qué estar sufriendo, ya que hay una vacuna. En cuanto a vacunar a la población, estamos haciendo todo lo posible. Estamos yendo a cada rincón de nuestro condado. Hemos creado un sistema de eh, becas para estudiantes que reciben la vacuna. Hemos, estamos yendo puerta a puerta. Tenemos una campaña de medios todo lo que uno se le puede imaginar. Hoy día agregamos una herramienta más a la lucha. Empezando el día de hoy, inmediatamente, cualquier persona que reciba su primera dosis de la vacuna de COVID-19 en una sede del Departamento de Salud Pública del Condado Harris recibirá 100 dólares sin compromiso, 100 dólares en cuanto reciba su vacuna. Es gratis la vacuna, es fácil, es segura, no se necesita aseguranza, no se le pide ni siquiera identificación, mucho menos prueba de ciudadanía ni de residencia, nada de eso se le pide. 
Así recibe su vacuna. Tenemos 10 sedes eh, al, cada día a lo, a lo largo del condado. Esas sedes van rotando. Visite readyharris.org o llame al 832-927-8787 para ver qué sedes hay cada día. Puede también sacar una cita. Todas las sedes ofrecen vacunas de tanto una dosis como de dos dosis. Recuerde, si, si tiene entre 2 y 17 años, solamente califica para la vacuna Pfizer. Si usted no planea, si es una persona más de último minuto, no tiene por qué sacar cita, puede presentarse así como se está haciendo el día de hoy, simplemente llegar. Ya sepa pues que de repente hay una línea porque vamos a priorizar las personas con cita. Como siempre, si necesita ayuda de transporte, vamos nosotros y lo recogemos para llevarlo a la sede de vacunación. Entonces igual llame al 832-927-8787. Este programa se extiende hasta agosto 31, hasta finales de este mes. Entonces, por favor, apúrese a ponerse la, vacu la vacuna. Lo único que debe hacer es ir a una de nuestras sedes de vacunación del condado Harris, del Departamento de Salud Pública, entre el día de hoy al 31 de agosto. Las personas que se están vacunando hoy día aquí están recibiendo sus 100 dólares. Entonces, preséntese a, su a recibir la vacuna y recibirá 100 dólares de una vez, ninguna pregunta, ni, ningún, ninguna complicación. Esto también apoya a nuestros pequeños negocios a través del condado Harris. El, la información de mayo del 2021, de acuerdo a la Universidad de Harvard, que comparado con enero del 2020, los ingresos de las pequeñas empresas en nuestro condado se han visto reducidos un, casi un 38%. El número de pequeñas empresas abiertas ha, ha, se ha reducido un 35.8%. La semana pasada aprobamos un programa de becas de 30 millones de dólares para apoyar a los negocios más pequeños, a los negocios más vulnerables, especialmente los negocios eh, con dueños que son minorías o mujeres, pero necesitan esos negocios de, de nuestro apoyo, del apoyo de todos nosotros. Entonces, Ayúdele a, a darles un impulso. Cuando reciba sus 10, 100 dólares, vaya a su restaurante favorito local, vaya a su tienda favorita, de repente está haciendo las compras para regresar a la escuela, las útiles escolares, todo eso. Entonces, ayudémonos todos. Bien, esto se trata acerca de protegernos a nosotros, de protegerse usted si no tiene todavía la vacuna, pero también es acerca de proteger a las personas que nos cuidan, a los trabajadores de primera línea. Aquí está el doctor Porza, él es el director de nuestro sistema hospitalario público. Él representa docenas, cientos de trabajadores médicos que han estado trabajando desde marzo del 2020. Están cansados, él lo han dicho, están cansados. Sus familias están cansadas, no merecen, no merecen, no tienen ningún sentido que se presente al hospital una persona muriendo del virus simplemente porque no se quiso poner la vacuna. No es justo. Y les debemos un poco de respeto y les debemos un poco de apoyo a estos trabajadores médicos. Entonces, hágalo por usted, hágalo por su familia, hágalo por su comunidad, hágalo por sus trabajadores médicos, hágalo porque le ofrecemos 100 dólares si se pone la vacuna. Ya más del 65% de las personas elegibles tienen al menos una dosis. Entonces está en la minoría definitivamente, pero esa minoría nos está haciendo daño como en comunidad. Miren los números hospitalarios que estamos viendo. Podemos lograr un cambio. En dos a cuatro semanas podemos ver este virus ya prácticamente eliminado. Si se pone la vacuna la gente. Entonces espero verlos todos aquí que no se han vacunado aún y manos a la obra todos juntos. Doctor Porza. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Judge. I uh, appreciate everything you've done so far in helping us uh, getting through this, uh, this pandemic. I want to start, as always, by thanking all the members of the Harris Health System, our doctors, nurses, techs, everybody else, who has been working tirelessly over the last 18 months getting us through this pandemic, in addition to all healthcare staff, not just here in Texas Medical Center, but across the state and across the nation. You know, you heard from the judge, and it's true, this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. You know, the numbers are very clear. Far majority of all the patients who are currently being admitted to the hospitals across this country related to COVID-19 are unvaccinated. 
At Harris Health System, my hospital system, more than 98% of all COVID-19 related admissions to the hospitals are among the unvaccinated. 100% of all COVID related deaths at Harris Health System since January 1 of this year has been among the unvaccinated. This is truly the pandemic of the unvaccinated. But let me be very clear. The actions of the segment of our population that is simply choosing not to do the right thing, getting vaccinated, wearing the face mask when in public, and socially distanced, the impact of those actions reach far beyond the unvaccinated. By not doing the right thing, you are taking away resources, precious resources from all our hospital system to attend to the needs of our community for unrelated things that are unrelated to COVID-19, such as trauma, such as heart attacks, such as stroke, such as a ruptured appendix. By not doing the right thing, you're stressing our healthcare staff who have now been dealing with this for 18 months. They are tired. They are dispirited by facing yet another COVID surge, one that is worse than any other surge we have faced so far, and also one that was preventable. This is not about personal choice. This is not about individual freedoms. This is about individual responsibility. By not exercising your individual responsibility to be part of the solution, you're hurting our community. This is about all of us coming together, crossing bridges and acting as one and becoming part of the solution so we can turn this thing around and bring the pandemic to an end. At the end of the day, Vaccination is going to be the only thing that is going to take us across the finish line. We need everybody to get vaccinated. If you're still on the fence about getting vaccinated, please do everything else that so far has been very effective to get us past the previous surges. Please wear your face mask when in public. Please socially distance. Please wash your hands frequently or sanitize it. We need all of us, again, to come together as a community to get us over this hump. This is the worst surge that we have faced as a community. The numbers at Harris Health and other hospital systems in this area have never gone up this far, this fast. I know that less, a little more than half of the population in this community is fully vaccinated. The Delta variant is proving to be way too contagious for this degree of vaccination to have an impact. So please, I am begging you, do the right thing. Get yourself vaccinated. Get your children over the age of 12 vaccinated. Wear a face mask when in public. Wash your hands or sanitize it frequently and socially distance. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Judge, and thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, I am honored to be here with the judge. Uh, the judge has made it her mission in life, it seems, to get everyone vaccinated. And I share her concerns. Let me start with this. This is the congressional district that I happen to have the opportunity to represent in Congress. My congressional district is one of those where we have a high amount of unvaccinated persons. So to those who live in my congressional district and who live in Houston, Texas, here's my message to you. When you come, you don't have to have an ID. When you appear, you don't have to have proof of citizenship. When you appear, you but only have to want to get vaccinated and you will get the opportunity to not only get vaccinated, but also to get $100, $100. Just as an aside, uh, if, if I thought that this mask could hide my identity, I might get vaccinated again. But $100 will be given to you. It's important to note what the doctor said. The doctor talked about how this variant is highly contagious. Friends, you have seen the television stations that have broadcast persons who declined to get vaccinated, and you have heard what they have said. Not one person has said, if I could do it all over again, I would avoid getting a vaccination. To the person, they have all said, if I could do it again, I would get vaccinated. This is something that we must take seriously because 
if you do get the virus, you can then spread it to other people in your family who are not vaccinated as well. So I'm begging you as others have, I'm pleading with you, I beseech you, I implore you, please get vaccinated. And today is a great day to do it. Uh, we have a small line, come on over, we're at NRG Stadium. When you arrive here, you don't have to have an appointment. You but only have to come and you can get your vaccination. Finally, this point. I heard a physician say uh, with the city of Houston, Dr. Peirce, that you are very likely to come into contact with this virus, very likely. If this is true, the question for you is this. Do you want to have contact with the virus and not be vaccinated? Or do you want to be vaccinated if you are likely to come into contact with the virus? I believe the answer is you want to be vaccinated. And I believe the persons who have indicated this, who were not vaccinated on their hospital beds, uh, they would say a similar thing to you. So do this for me. Know that all of these cameras that are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you don't get yourself vaccinated and you get this virus and you're in the hospital. Some camera, perhaps one of these, will be there at your hospital bed to allow you to make your statements as to why you didn't get vaccinated and whether you would, given the chance to live your life over again, behave in a similar fashion. Please, don't be a person who will be caught without a proper vaccination. Judge, I thank you for allowing me to say this to my constituents and your constituents, and I gladly support what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. We'll take any questions. Judge, we've already heard from several people online saying that you know they feel like they did the right thing by getting the vaccination early to try to prevent things from getting to this point. And they're upset that now we're paying people who waited. What would your message be to those people that are upset about this? Look, first, I think anybody who's already gotten the vaccine thinks we can be sure that things would be worse if you hadn't done that, if you had not gotten the vaccine. And things are bad. Things are at the very, very edge, and they are worsening right now. Right now, things are not getting better yet. And so when you got the vaccine, even without the $100, you served yourself. You served your community. You've helped us at least make it this far. I think health is worth more than $100. So look, I get it. I get the frustration. You're saying I was responsible, I stepped up, and now you know the folks that didn't are getting rewarded. But I, I, I want to say to you, you did receive the benefit of health, the benefit of the vaccine, the benefit of serving your community, and you are, if it weren't for you, things would be worse now. And right now, actually, we're asking you to do more. We're asking those folks who've stepped up, who've, who've been responsible to do more, and that is to encourage the folks in their lives, um, the folks in their family, their coworkers, the people that, that they know they have influence over to go and get the vaccine. And now you have yet another argument for why they should get the vaccine. And so, um, yeah, I, I, look, I, I, I understand, but the not being hospitalized, not dying, I think is worth worth more than, than the $100. Judge, how large is the pot and um, what's the source of, of, of uh, Judge's money coming? So right now we have invested $2.3 million in this program and that we believe will get us through at least the first couple of weeks, obviously, uh, depending on demand, we'll grow it. We've committed to this program by August 31st. The funds are coming from the American Rescue Plan funds. And that, that's another thank you to our congressional delegation and the Biden administration for supporting us with American Rescue Plan funds. Harris County slated to receive about uh, $900 million. And so this 2.3 million is coming from there. I say the numbers are the numbers are, are very clear. We have the highest number of pediatric hospitalizations 
in Harris County that we've seen throughout the length of the pandemic. We have children, we have babies losing their lives because of COVID-19 and related diseases. And we know that the virus spreads in close quarters and we know that the face mask prevents it from spreading. So we have a responsibility to protect every child in our care. Schools have that responsibility. Parents have that responsibility to one another. You have to protect your child and, and other people's child in these schools. And if that is not enough, I want to make very clear here in Harris County, the public health order requiring masks in schools is still very much in effect. And every day that order is in effect, we are protecting children. And we need superintendents, we need parents to make sure that happens. This is the time for parents to continue speaking up. And I've heard from a lot of them, from a lot of parents, a lot of teachers, a lot of administrators who felt powerless, who wanted guidance from, from Harris County. That's why we issued our public health order. Dr. White here signed it. And But you know, it takes the community coming together. So these children can't get the vaccine and we can't simply leave them helpless. We can't simply leave them to get the virus. Uh, and certainly we can't, you know, we, we can't uh, just just have them as sitting ducks. So everybody needs to step up and get the vaccine who can. And for these children that can't get vaccinated, we need them to wear masks. Judge, a question similar to Adam's, but from the other end of the spectrum, does it present some type of moral dilemma or dilemma in general for government to offer a, a, a monetary incentive for people to take care of their own health care, so to speak? Yeah, this is all unprecedented. You know, this is all unprecedented, everything related to this pandemic. And, uh, you know, if you think about it from a cost benefit standpoint, what is the cost of a hospital bed that's filled unnecessarily? What is the cost of a hospital bed that is lacking for a stroke or a heart attack patient or a pregnant woman because uh, someone with COVID decided to, to not get the vaccine? What's the cost of a life? when we know these vaccines save lives. So from a cost benefit standpoint, I think it's pretty clear that the benefit outweighs the cost. Um, as a community, we need to get past this virus. The economy suffers. It's not just health. Even if people think, well, I'm not gonna wear a mask, I'm not gonna get the vaccine. When there's this high level of cases, folks feel less comfortable going out with good reason. They feel a lot less comfortable participating in the economy. And so this continues to harm every piece of, of, of life in this community and in this country. And so the sooner we can get through this pandemic, the better it'll be for the health of the community as a whole, for the economy, for our children, and the ticket out of the pandemic is the vaccine. So uh, I feel a responsibility to do everything I possibly can to get folks vaccinated. And this is the latest effort. But look, there, the truth is there's only so much I can do. And that's why part of the request and, and why Dr. Porce is here and, and Congressman Green is here is to say, we have got to step up. Enough is enough. Look at what has, is happening to our hospitals. Look at what you're doing to our hospitals by not getting the vaccine. You created more dangerous variants. Yeah. Hemos escuchado de la administración federal que aquellas personas con condiciones subyacentes, ciertas condiciones, van a necesitar otra dosis de la vacuna y también después de ocho meses las personas que se han vacunado también van a estar necesitando otra dosis. Estamos trabajando en eso. Muchos de los hospitales ya tienen planes, entonces sabemos que no depende de la población solo de nosotros, pero el Departamento de Salud Pública está trabajando en la logística para ofrecer eso también. Sí, han sido ya varios meses de que existen las vacunas y a estas alturas todavía personas por ideología, tal vez por religión o por convicción, no han querido vacunarse. ¿Cree usted que este incentivo 
económico va a hacernos cambiar de que están viendo este reportaje y decir me voy a cualquiera de los 10 centros del condado a vacunar? Espero que sí, eh, que espero que este incentivo sea el empujoncito que necesitan ciertas personas para vacunarse. Este domingo hicimos un, un eh, ejercicio piloto. Estuvimos distribuyendo la, los 100 dólares en una de nuestras sedes de vacunación. Y cuando normalmente llegan unas 40 por personas por evento, eh, llegaron más de 250. Entonces, eh, espero que esa sea una buena señal de que este será un, un importante incentivo. And I do want to repeat that in, in, in English with both questions. One was about the, the third dose uh, that, that, uh, that the administration has been talking about. And uh, of course, uh, many of our hospitals are getting ready to offer that, that additional dose for folks with pre-existing conditions, as well as uh, folks who are going to be needing a, a, a third dose at some point. Of course, our public health department is working on those logistics as well, but we will not be the only ones that have to provide it. So we're working with all our hospitals on that. As to whether Whether we expect success from this initiative, I hope so. I really hope that this is uh, the, 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 the latest uh, small push that folks needed to be able to get the vaccine, to, to make that decision, to support their community. We had a pilot this weekend on Sunday at one of our vaccination sites. We offered the $100, and where normally we see about 40 people in these events, they're shorter events, uh, we saw over 240 folks come to that event, and we've seen some good outcomes from other areas that have implemented similar programs. So uh, hurry up, come get your vaccine. And, and I, do, I do hope and I do trust that this will be the, the last encouragement the community needed to go and get the vaccine. So just a quick point of clarification. So, uh, so those getting their first shot, they get it. What about those waiting for a second shot? This $100 is only for your first shot. And that is uh, based on the research we did in Harris County, Harris County Public Health sites. Very high percentage, 97% of folks come back for their second shot. And we hope that's going to continue to be the case. And I, I will say, we've been very careful when you come and get your vaccine, uh, you are going to have to confirm that this is, in fact, your first shot. And we know that there's penalty uh, from lying on a government form. So, and, and, and we're taking very seriously the handling of these gift cards, working with the auditor's office to make sure that everything is as carefully managed as can be. Yeah, so thank you for that question. The situation is bad. I mean, it, it's really, for me to say that it's worse than last week, it, it really changes from time to time. I'm going to give you an example. Yesterday morning when I arrived to work, we had a patient with acute pancreatitis, not a COVID patient but a patient on several medications through intravenous strip under ICU status admission who had been in my emergency room for 40 hours waiting for a hospital bed for 40 hours. This is a very, very sick patient. I use that example to, to illustrate how bad the situation really is for folks to understand that this is not about the number of COVID patients going up. They are up. We are now surpassing any surge that we had previously. But let me again emphasize the fact that this is related to all non-COVID issues. When the hospital beds are full, the next patient who comes in with a non-COVID related issue, they're gonna have to wait. 40 hours of waiting in the emergency room is not best care, is not high quality care. But that's where we are today in Houston, Texas. And that is shameful. Thank you for that question. Is there, is there any kind of a timeline on when more staffing could arrive, uh, especially for that tent that was set up outside of the day? So, so there, there are really two different questions. You know, the tent is really related to us having the capability and flexibility to assign COVID patients or COVID suspect patients to somewhere other, other than our ER waiting room to create a, not to create an opportunity for infection. But to answer your question about staffing, I've got very good news today that the first set of state-provided nursing staff are arriving on site either later today or tomorrow. It's not a whole mess of them, but it is allowing us to actually expand our ICU capacity at our hospital, which is a very extremely welcome news. So thank you for those questions. How many? You said not enough, but how many? 
I, I don't have the exact numbers. I want to say less than 30 for both hospitals, but I may be wrong. Please don't quote me on that because I don't have the exact numbers. Doctor, one more follow-up question for my producers. Is there a number on how many children have died from COVID-19? Uh, so we don't have a large pediatric uh, population in our hospitals. Already, I'm not the best person to answer that question. But I can tell you that I heard this morning that Texas now has the highest number of pediatric ICU admissions in the country. Hemos estado visitando casi que todas las comunidades. Hemos priorizado las comunidades con menos tasa de vacunación, con más alta tasa de, de virus. Estamos viendo mucha más participación ya de la comunidad latina, entonces eso me alegra. Necesitamos más, pero realmente ha incrementado muchísimo. Eh, seguimos viendo participación limitada por parte de la comunidad afroamericana eh, y bueno, seguiremos visitando esas comunidades, eh, respondiendo preguntas y obviamente con este programa de incentivos tenemos más de 10 sedes semanalmente. Yeah. Tengo una pregunta en español sobre inmigración. Usted sabe la frontera, están llegando inmigrantes a las centrales de autobuses en el ISTE, en el Havenburg, y quedan a la deriva solamente organizaciones eh, caritativas les están ayudando. ¿Tiene el condado Harris algún programa de ayuda a inmigrantes? Estamos en contacto con la administración Biden en este momento acerca de la situación de inmigrantes. Precisamente el día de hoy tengo una conversación acerca de, de, de qué podemos hacer. Entonces, en este momento no tengo una respuesta, pero sí es algo que estamos trabajando. The greater moral dilemma is if you have the opportunity to do something that can make a difference and you fail to do it, then you have failed to live up to the, the clarion call to help, the duty to respond with all of your might. So I think the judge was eminently correct in saying that we have a responsibility to do all that we can. And the greater moral dilemma is failing to do all that we can. This is a part of doing all that we can. And finally, uh, I, I want to reemphasize what was said about being sure that if you've been vaccinated, that you don't show up to get vaccinated again. Uh, that would be a mistake. I, I would beg that people not do so. And judge again, I thank you. Yeah, and, and before we end, thank you, Congressman. I do want to clarify the $100 is per person, not per family, per person. So if you come uh, with your children over the age of 12 and you've not been vaccinated either, each of you will receive the $100. As I said, it's uh, very intuitive, no strings attached. We really just not only want, but need everybody who is eligible in this community to get vaccinated. And um, so come join us, come join us. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you.